Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Tuesday, August 4th, and it's 8 oh, I'm sorry, 9.07 a.m. I found this uh, prophecy, actually, um, on my cell phone that someone had posted from the Grafted In Team Jesus um, on the Bubble Messenger. And so I listened to it. And then I came online and got on 444 Prophecy News, which is where it came from. And it is a message given to Alan Carrico. His blog spot is can't stop grinning dot blogspot dot com. I will put that in the description box if you want to check him out further. As always, I suggest you take every message before the Lord. If it doesn't sound right to you, use discernment always with all prophecy. All right, with that, I will begin. It's not that long, and I'm going to include the scripture. So you will have some scripture read to you today if you don't have time to to have done it elsewhere. Okay. Hello, my son. This is Jehovah Elohim speaking with you this day. Oh, let me, let me back up. Mike, uh, from Mike444 YouTube channel had put this out. And that's what I listened to, okay? On my phone. I wanted to clarify that. He has already reported it. So those of you who see Mike 444. Might have already heard this. But okay. So let me start over. Hello my son. This is Jehovah Elohim. Speaking with you this day. My children. The earth has fallen under judgment. For the gross sin of the people. America, once favored and founded upon my name, is now fallen. The United States will never be united again. As great division has moved over the land, and she will never be great again. Her fall will now become evident even to those in the greatest of denials as day-to-day -day living will become a struggle for all. Even those who claim to be in power will now suffer great defeats in all they do for nothing can stop this great fall. This will send shock waves around the earth and none will escape the effects. Let me just pause here for a second and say I do believe this has to do with those who will be left behind. I mean, we may see a little bit of it and then the first rapture, first fruits will leave go outside of time, get our glorified bodies, get our assignments, get trained, whatever, and come back as the Harvest Army, basically. you That's what I'm calling us now. The Harvest Army. Are you in it? I want to help harvest the wheat for Jesus, don't you? It'll be so awesome. We'll see a lot, but you know, the hurt and injured, we can heal them. We will do great exploits. As the word says, greater things than these shall you do. All right, let me move on with this word of prophecy from Jehovah Elohim. The economies of the nations have crumbled. And wealth will now vanish before your eyes. Great famines are coming as well as great stress and strife for many who will cling to the thought that it will be just a short time before things go back to normal. 
my children, nothing will ever go back to what you deem normal. The end of this age has come, and my word is being fulfilled. In this time, you must cry out to me in repentance. See, those who are ready don't need to cry out in repentance. We've been repenting and asking forgiveness every day. If not, if you haven't been or you know people who believe in once saved, always saved, maybe if you send them this, maybe they'll listen all right, he says, you must, in this time, you must cry out to me in repentance at all times so that I protect you from what has come. I thought Mike had read that wrong. I thought he meant it should be coming or that the person typed it up wrong. But no, I realized I so that I protect you from what has come. It is already here. The beast system. It's being set up. It's very obvious. All the videos that have come out. About the. You know the vaccine. And. All that we've heard. About the health situations. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, when I cough, I get this muscle spasm in my gut. It's from being exposed to too much cigarette smoke. It is not COVID, y'all. Oh, gosh. Oh. Okay. In this time, you must cry out to me in repentance at all times so that I protect you from what has come. See, he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Did he not? He will not leave you helpless. Okay? Those who know me, but nominally, those who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and yet are living in the world system, will now suffer for their lack of faith. Great faith will be needed in this time if you are to have the peace, provision, and protection that only I can give in this time. You have but a few weeks before your lives will become unrecognizable from what you have known. I cry out to you now, and still many slumber. Ready yourselves to be awakened from your slumber, for the time of the end has come. And he signs it, I am. Now, the scriptures that were attached to this are Ephesians 4 and Revelation 6, using the King James Version. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. Forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to pause there. This was verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Right. There are right now 30,000 denominations in America alone. 
Now, do you think that makes God happy? That the church he established way back 2,000, nearly 2,000 years ago, when he walked on the earth, it was at first called the way. And John the Baptist, who was the forerunner for Jesus, baptized with water for the remission of sins. I know people still did it after, but the remission of sins is now by the covering of the blood of Jesus. You have to accept Jesus as your Savior. Getting baptized in water, I've always felt that that was an outward statement to those you invited. Hey, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. Y'all come and to my baptism. It means a lot to me. So they may not get in church any other time but that. But anyway, the baptism I believe he's talking about is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can believe it or not. But that is what God wants. That's what Jesus wants. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. If you had to pick one over the other. You need it to be the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. One God and Father of all who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And gave gifts unto men. He led captivity captive. Now that he ascended, that's got to be when he died went to hell, took back the keys to hell in the grave, he had to ascend to the Father. Remember when he told, I think it was Mary, or Martha, it was one of them, I think it was Mary, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended unto the Father. He So at some point between then and when he appeared to the apostles, because he allowed them to touch him, he ascended up on high, probably leaving the keys in heaven, if they were literal keys. They may not have been literal keys, but he brought back the keys, the power, the rights to death and the grave, death and hell. I've always learned it, death, hell, and the grave, but scriptures say death and hell, I think is how it's worded. Anyway, so that must be, he led captivity captive. In other words, now we have freedom. Captivity is like you're enclosed, you're, you're in jail, you're in bondage, you're not free. Now we're free. We are free. He brought us freedom from hell and the grave. Okay? We don't know. We no longer have to die and go to hell. Now we can choose him and choose freedom. Okay. So I think that's a good way to explain it. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended 
Oh, he descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Oh, well, here it is. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. I think it, you mean, it means fulfill, that he might fulfill all things. He said before he died, when he was teaching people, he, or maybe it was after, um, oh, that, that he would fulfill all things that about the like the commandments the Old Testament laws he said not one jot or tittle would pass away until he fulfilled all things I'd have to look it up to say it word for word verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge, well, that isn't happening, that's just gotten worse and worse and worse as, as each century went by. Once the Catholic Church got established and Martin Luther posted his thesis on the door of his particular Catholic Church and broke away, making the Lutheran denomination. And then from there they broke off and there was another one and another one and then another one and then another one and so on and so forth. And you had men making up their minds that, well, we don't like... It took a couple of men talking, well, I don't like this thing about the whatever. Uh, I don't like this thing about... Um, that you have to be water baptized. Yeah, we need to do away with that and do whatever. And then eventually the Holy Spirit stuff got just kicked out and nobody b believed in baptism of the Holy Spirit anymore. And I believe that was revived in the 1800s, which is when they started having dreams and visions again. Okay, let me move on. I hope you see that point. All right, so Jesus made it possible to give some the gifts of all these different offices. You could say some were, made, were to be made apostles, some prophets, some, so we're not all going to be prophets. Some are evangelists. We're not all going to go out and be the same to evangelize. We can do our part to spread the word, but not everybody's going to have the... We're not all born the same. Aren't you glad? It'd be such a boring life. Some have called to be pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. And I believe that happens when we go to heaven. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carrying about with every wind of doctrine, See, already back then when Paul was writing this, um, people were being tossed to and fro. This place was making up a doctrine. This place was making up a doctrine. And they were like, well, do we believe this? Do we believe that? No, I think we should believe this. 
Okay, so that was already starting. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Already, back then, Satan had infiltrated the church, getting his demons into men who lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, excuse me, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop tearing at the, the rug, Jasper. He tries to, you know how doggies like to ball up their blankets into a round circle? He tries, he's trying to do that with the rug. Stop it. Stop. He needs his toys. Hold on. Here. Get in there. Get that blue blanket out. Let's get the blue blanket out. You can line that up there. There you go. Get you some toys out. I'm sorry, Jasper. It's just like having a little baby. Honestly, let me check my position. It's just like having a little baby. Okay. All right. Where were we? All right, but let's see. We uh, there that the okay. That we henceforth be no more children. Let's not be children anymore. Is what he's saying. Tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the sight of men. I got it. Hold on a minute. I have to go to Blue Letter Bible. Why can I not connect? The internet's on. Oh, I might. There it is. Okay, so let me check which verse was that again. This is Ephesians 4. that word slight it's important to understand what you're reading and it's one of them older where I, I think I know what it means but I don't want to say it wrong there it is it's in verse 14 414 okay Ephesians 414 let's put it into here So I can get the the Greek. Let me go to tools. By the slight. Okay, it's G twenty nine forty. From Kubos, a cube. For example, a die for playing. It's a feminine noun. Slight. Dice playing. Metaphorically, the deception of men. Because dice players sometimes cheated and defrauded their fellow players. Like a sleight of hand. Like a magician does a sleight of hand. Would it be that slight? Probably Artifice or fraud, slight, yeah, okay, an artific artificial or fraud, okay, that makes it more clear, okay, so 
that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the fraud of men. Yeah, or artificial made-up doctrines, made-up doctrines, like once saved, always saved. Okay, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Christ is the head from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love uh, I want to say that through being with this ministry that I have joined, you could say, it's like online church. And I get to, you know, hear and, and the other members talk out loud and we hash out, what does this mean? What does that mean? Is this of God like a prophecy or... The scriptures, we go over what they mean, what, you know, we ask Holy Spirit, uh, give us understanding of this. We were three and a half hours the other night going over Revelation 13 and 14, I think it was. Um, it was just something else. And somebody had a vision in the middle of it and... That video is up now. I had to leave at 9 o'clock my time. And she went ahead on and recorded the video for it. It's amazing. And I want to share it on here. So maybe I'll get to that later. Because it's like, I can't remember how long it is. But anyway, I wanted to get this prophecy up. And give a scriptural teaching. Okay. So, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Even though everybody is saved, and they all believe they're going in the rapture. Well, they don't all. Some people don't believe in the rapture. Some They're saved, but they don't know the scriptures. They don't believe in the rapture, or they believe in a mid midpoint or post-trib which they used to, for years and years, Kathy and Dan were diehard post-trib. We're going through it all, and then Jesus will take us. I guess they thought he was going to take them up and then bring them right back for the thousand years or what, whatever. I'm not sure how she put it. But anyway, then the Lord started dealing with them and teaching them, no, a small portion will go up outside of time be transformed we come back and we harvest the wheat boy it's been amazing this stuff I've learned how the 144,000 are the sickle in his hand uh, that people will see on the clouds I can't describe it all I'm not going to get into it because I might say it wrong, and then you'll think, oh, that's crazy, that ain't right, because I might say it wrong. All right, so, but the point is, I believe I did a video on what, the one thing I learned was that when, when God put Adam to sleep, he pulled a small part of his body out, made Eve... And then presented her to him, the first Adam, as a bride or wife. In like manner, he's taking a small portion of us out. And then we'll end up being presented to Jesus as his bride. 
But what about the rest of the body of Christ? We come back, we harvest the wheat, we heal, d deliver, if you need heart healing, deliverance, um, change of attitude, uh, some people will bring back from the dead, will put bodies back together, I just, all those things Jesus did and more. Protect you. It's going to be so amazing. And I just, I wish I could remember so much more, but then this video would be two hours long or more. Okay, so I'm going to try to get through this. Um, so anyway, we'll end up making the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. It, the whole body will end up up there. Because when we come back, we will explain the one saved, all he saved is wrong and you must repent. And believe me, they will. Okay, so you keep praying for your loved ones. They will get there. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting a little dry. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Okay? Um, the ones who don't walk as the other Gentiles walk, they have their understanding darkened. Okay, people who are born again, but they're not living right. Let me start over. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk. Okay, that would represent the world. The Gentiles who have not yet given their hearts over to the Lord, or they're already serving other gods. That's the world. In the vanity of their mind, they think they're right. They're vain. They're prideful. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, See, they just don't know what they're missing. They're ignorant. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ you have not so learned Christ if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man you put off the old man the way you used to be, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, a lot of people believe that once you get born again, or let's call it saved, you've given your heart to the Lord. You said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I need saved. Please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and make me a new creature in Christ or whatever they tell you to repeat. Okay? Okay. So now these people are telling you or your friend is telling you you're born again and you are now part of the body of Christ. Okay, but they don't tell you what to do from that point on. 
So maybe they say, now start coming to church with me and you'll learn. And I hope they say, get a Bible and start reading the Gospels, the words of Jesus. That's where everybody should start. Okay, and I always recommend John first. Okay, so we want to put on the new man, which is after God. Created in righteousness and true holiness. That's, how, that's our goal, to be as we were created to be, righteous and holy. Wherefore, putting away, lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. It's not saying don't ever get angry. It's not saying don't ever have feelings of wrath. But don't go to bed feeling that way. You need to deal with it. You need to deal with it with prayer. Maybe calling the person. Tell them, look, I'm sorry I blew up at you. Uh, I should not have acted that way. Uh, will you forgive me for acting that way toward you or whatever? Okay? Try to get it done before you go to bed. If possible. If they don't answer the phone, then they don't. Alright. Let him that stole steal no more. That means taking rubber bands from work. Okay? Or a box of staples. Or a stapler. Or whatever. Things you might think, oh, they get cases of these every week. Well, maybe if people stop taking a box of them home, you know, if everybody did, yeah, they're going to need to order more. It's coming out of the company's pocket. No matter what you think, you have no excuse. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Everyone should work who's physically able, even if, it, if it's hard labor. So you can also give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. All right? We want only good communication to come out of our mouth. Not that it always comes out of mine. I got upset with a company that I set up an automatic draft for, and I had paid a payment at the end of the month, which is when I normally did, which made it always a little bit late and set up the new payment for the fifth of every month. So they were taking it out on the fifth because I get my check on the third. Well, this last month they took out the payment on the 29th and or had, yeah, had took it out. And I was just checking my bank account and I was like, what in the heck? I don't know till the 5th. I called them up, not, you know, I, I cuss, but I said, what, what is this? You guys have already taken out my payment on the 29th. I said, I don't have enough money now to get any groceries. And she said, oh, the boss came in and anybody with an automatic draft that still has a balance, he automatically takes it out every now and then. And I said, you can't do that. When people set up an account for you to take it out on the 5th, you can't just go ahead and take money out. I had no idea that I was still a month behind, supposedly. I'm supposed to look up all my records for the last three years and try to find out where I fell behind. Because, see, I thought I knew I was behind. I made the payment and set it up for the 5th. Anyway... Perhaps that wasn't enough, but the point is, I should not have 
lost my temper at that girl because she didn't do it. Anyway, she told me she would put the money back in my account, which she did, so I was able to buy the food I needed. And anyway, I felt really bad about it, and I'm going to call now that I got my check, and I'm going to make the payment. I told her to take me off auto payment and I'm going to make the payment and apologize because I feel bad about it. See, we should. That's the Holy Spirit conviction. So, this is almost done. This, I won't read Revelation 6, but you should because it's in here and it's the seals. It's all the seals being opened. Um, but this is an excellent chapter. It's just extra long and I keep throwing stuff in. Which we should do because not everybody understands everything. I don't even understand it all. I do my best and pray that the Lord helps me. Alright, so. But that, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice that means including all malice I think that's like hating uh, bad feelings towards someone. Let's, we can go ahead and look that up because I'm wondering about clamor anyway. So this is what verse? The last, this is 31. Okay, so 431. All right. 431. See, if I was not in King James Version, I would, it would probably already say a word that made sense. Clamor. Kruga. Kraga. Kraga. Cry. Crying. Clamor. Crying and outcry, an outcry in notification, tumult, or grief. Clamor, crying, cry, crying. Okay, so we don't want to cry, have an outcry. Oh, it'd be like an outburst. Cry out. I can see that. Okay. Like an outburst, crying out. Okay, so let's not do that. And malice, let's see. Twenty-five, forty-nine, kakia. Kia is malice, maliciousness, evil, wickedness, naughtiness, malignity, malice, ill will, desire to injure, wickedness, depravity. I think we get the point. Wickedness that is not ashamed to break laws, evil or trouble. Wow, we got enough of that going on, don't we? A lot of that. So it ends with this, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay. 
And like I said, this is Revelation 6 here. You might want to read that on your own. That's the scriptures he added to his prophecy. I guess that's because that's how things are going to become. What it's telling us not to do, all clamor, uh, what are these protests, outcries, protesting, yelling. I can see it. Nothing will ever go back to what you deem normal. And now I will end it at that. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, myself, my computer, and each and every single one of you, and all of your devices and your internet connections. So you can stay connected. We can stay connected until we're out of here. And I pray that every single one of you may be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Won't it be wonderful? Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.